Hi everyone and welcome to Maggie Bot's Top 100 Games of All Time. The third installment, number is 8371. We're going to get started and talk about number 80, uh, which is Time and Space from Stronghold Games. This is a 2013 title that fits three to four players and was designed by Tobias Stoppelfeld. This is a re-implementation of an older design. Um, it's also real time, which is super rare, at least in balanced good games, in my opinion. Um, this one is done with sand timers. So you place sand timers out onto the board, and once they are depleted, you can take the action that you kind of set up. And while the sand is falling, you can spend that time negotiating with your fellow players to get your cubes to their planets and their cubes to your planet. And it's just so fabulous and fun, really hard sell because real time is already kind of hard unless you're space alert, but um, I can't recommend it enough. It's really fun, especially as the price is probably a lot lower than it was when it first came out. Um, number 79 is Blueprints uh, from Z-Man Games. This is a 2013 title. It fits two to four players and it was from Eve Turine or Turine or Turine. Um, I quite like this one. It's pretty darn simple game. You are trying to uh, manipulate dice and stack them on one another and get prizes and awards. And what I love about this game is that it's absolutely gorgeous. You can teach it to anyone. The rule set is really, really dead simple. But there is some strategy to it. There's actually kind of some best strategies to it after you've played it enough. Um, but competing with people over similar awards, trying to uh, see what they're working on to try and get in their way or not compete with them directly is really important. And I quite love this little, like, very inexpensive game. Uh, number 78 is Anomia from uh, Anomia Press. This is a 2014 title. It fits three to six players, and the designer is named Andrew Ennis. And I believe this was kind of the first big thing that he could do. Um, Anomia is, well, as of Two months ago, I would have said it's my favorite clean party game. No offensive words, no swearing, no weird issue-based things, no politics. It was just straightforward and lovely. Unfortunately, Anomia very recently came out with an Anomia X deck, which is that like offensive humor thingy that people just seem to gosh darn love. But what I can say is that Anomia and the subsequent Anomia Party Edition are fabulous, simple, great, easy party games that um, is probably my favorite party game of all time. I, I love Anomia, and I think it fits with most people's personalities. It can be a little anxiety-driven um, if you are prone to that. It's twitchy, so you have to be careful if people don't care for real speed type mechanics. It's gonna, it's gonna affect that a little bit. Number 77 is Android Netrunner from 2012. This is a two-player living card game. It was originally designed as a CCG from Richard Garfield for Wizards of the Coast. Uh, Fantasy Flight Games purchased the rights to it and put it into their Android universe. Um, I quite love this game. I learned it as soon as it came out. I was really hype about it. And I would say that it does not disappoint. It's got those beautiful psychological elements that I really like in games. Um, as a corporation, you're playing control. You put things face down. And as a runner, you're playing aggro. And you're trying to figure out what people might be doing or saying or setting up for you. And I quite love those little guessing games that some games seem to inspire. My problem with Netrunner and why it appears so low on this list is that the folks that frequent or play it a lot typically are the most competitive people I know. <laughs> um, the really competitive people that got out of Magic, which are... Um, we call them spikes. Uh, they seem to gravitate toward the system, and it was really because it's so balanced and wonderful. So, almost everyone I know that plays Netrunner is really, really hyper competitive, and I can't hang. I like to play casually, I like to have fun in my games. So, just not my thing. So, I own the first, I own three three copies of the core game and the first three seasons of Netrunner, but I haven't played in a really long time. Um, they recently put out something called Terminal Directive, which was kind of a new experience of how to play Netrunner. 
Um, I might try that one out if I get the time in the next season or two. I'm looking forward to it. Number 76 is Six Nymphs. This is a little tiny card game from 1994, and as you might be discovering through my top 100, I like clever card games. Tiny, clever little uses of cards because I like how portable they are and how easy they are to teach to lo lots of different groups and how nice they are for conventions. And there are so many of them and so many of them are disappointing that as soon as I find one that is good, I am all about it. <laughs> so things like uh, Parade or Red 7 for my last top 10 and now Six Nymphed. Um, Six Nymphed has the benefit of going all the way up to 10 people, which I would almost never want to play a game at 10 people, but this is one that I would totally play. It was designed by Wolfgang Kramer, so that's like a pretty big name. And in the States here, you can find it from May Mayflower Games. Um, <laughs> I wrote Mayflower? Mayfair Games. That's, that's, that's nice. Um, Mayfair Games uh, is a real company, and Mayflower Games is a boat, so um, you may want to look for the real one. Uh, still fabulous, you can play it online too, and it just is a nice, great, um, kind of press your lucky psychological game. Uh, number 75, The Very Clever Pipe Game. This is a 1996 game from Cheap Ass. Um, this is designed by James Ernest. Uh, it's two to four players. Um, the Very Clever Pipe Game was um, one of those Cheap Ass games that just came in like a small plastic baggie and it was just these like really cheap printed white cards. But it's a fabulous little tactical game with a little bit of guessing, a little bit of luck, and I just clever and fun and I, I know it's pretty high on my list at 75 but I just have some nice warm fuzzy memories and it's one of the first little card games that I learned that was in the hobby and I, I still quite like it there's nothing there's nothing developed to this day that does what a very clever pet game does it's like sorrow but more attacky and smarter I, I quite love it Number 74 is brand new. It's Mystic Veil vale from 2016. This is designed by John D. Clare and published by AEG Games. Um, they are the folks that you would primarily know for L5R, but they make a lot of card games. I guess nowadays they're probably known for Love Letter a little bit more. Uh, Mystic Veil vale is pretty typical deck builder. You know, you start with a crappy starter deck and you want to level up your deck until it gets better. <laughs> but in Mystic Veil, vale, you use clear overlays to change the 20 cards in your deck rather than changing out how many or what cards appear in your deck. You actually change the cards themselves, so you're leveling them up. It also uses Press Your Luck in a way that I absolutely adore. I think Press Your Luck is a mechanism Yes, it's very luck driven, of course, but it's a mechanism that doesn't get used in a smart, clever way that often. And in this one, you are counting your discards, counting your deck, kind of making some assumptions, and you push your luck when you really need to. And that's nice in a strategy game. I quite love this game. Number 73 is called Tobago. Um, I no longer have a copy of this one, unfortunately. I gave it to a friend of mine, but this is a 2009 kind of deduction game from Rio Grande and Zach Verlag. Um, this was designed by a guy named Bruce Allen, and he hasn't done a whole lot of games. Um, Tobacco is one of the weirder deduction games I've ever seen, because it's not deduction because the game knows more than you, like Alchemists or Resistance. It's deduction because you define things over the course of the game and then go grab them. So over the course of a turn, you're like, okay, the treasure I want isn't next to water. So then you have to mark all the spaces that aren't next to water. And the next person is like, oh, but that treasure is also not next to a tree. So you take away all the spaces that are next to trees and not next to water. And it goes on and goes on until that treasure is so well defined that someone can go and pick it up. <laughs> and if you helped um, in defining where it was, you also get a share of the treasure. 
Um, it's just such a cool, funky little game. Uh, it's got a little too much luck for my personal tastes, but it is really good and really fun and beautiful. Um, you can still find this in French a lot of places, but you can't find the English edition anymore. I'm not sure why. Maybe it just didn't sell when it was out. Um, this was still in print when I first got into gaming, so I wasn't aware that it wasn't selling well, and I probably would have kept my copy maybe a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number 72 is Die Speikerstadt from 2010. This is a 3-5 to five player game designed by Stefan Feld, published by Eggert Spiel and Z-Man Games. Um, you will notice this is the first Feld of my list! Are you excited? I'm excited, because there's going to be lots. Um, there's not going to be as many as you think, because there are some Felds I just don't care for, but Die Speikerstadt is one of the best bidding y auction -y games that I know. Um, so this game, you just use your meeples to bid on things in such fabulous ways, and the screw you is real strong in this one. You could just really screw over the people that you're playing with, and I quite like that. Um, it is a good ball of fun. It has since been re-implemented by a game named Jorvik, or Jorvik. Um, I haven't played that one yet. What's nice about the new version is that they took Dishbikerstadt and the um, expansion called Kaishbiker and they mixed them together. So I'm looking forward to it. I do have a copy. I just haven't played it yet because a lot of my friends do not like bidding games. <laughs> Turns out. Uh, number 71, last of the list for today, is The Stouffer Dynasty. This is a 2014 game from Andrea Stedding. Uh, this is published by Argentum Verlag and Z-Med Games. Um, there's two to four players, and it's funky as hell. And J.S. Studding is probably best known for Haunted Teutonica, but this was one of his later games. You will see a few titles from him on this list. Um, it is so neat and fun. It's sort of like a rondelle in the way that you're thinking. All your actions are kind of linked together, and you need to manipulate this round board in a really cool way. And the luck is present but mitigated, which is always our preference. <laughs> present but mitigated is just fine. Uh, not mitigated is not fine. Uh, I quite like this, and it, it hit with a literal thump in the United States. No one played it, no one cared about it. I got it to the table a few times when it first came out, but it's since just sat on my shelf for many, many years now, I guess three years now. <laughs> I've only got about four plays of it in, but it's so great. Uh, I highly recommend it at least to give it a try, and the turn order sequence in this game is the best. So uh, everyone has multiple workers, and the way that you use them, line them up for your next turn. Um, I will also give this one an award for the funkiest score track. This had a score track in increments of 25 points, and it was this, like, funky little... You can see it in the corner of this picture, and you never got less than, I think, like, 80 points in this game, so you had to go multiple times around the score track and just trying to count, okay, I got to 25, and I get the chip, and then 20 two more than that. Like, it was just so weird and funky. Like, why 25? But why? Um... Yeah. <laughs> Alright, that's all from me for now, and I will see y'all next time. Hopefully you have been enjoying this Top 100. If you've not seen the previous two videos, please check them out in this playlist. And as always, please subscribe and share and like, comment, and I would be happy to talk to you about some of your favorite picks. Thank you.